Hello, everyone who is there present. Who is there present with me? Look, there are so many things around. And my name is Kelly Tavares. I'm a tour guide here in Rio de Janeiro. And I'm here with my friend Daniel from Perna Porta Productions, photographer, videographer, once in a while running the tours, the live stream tours here with me. And Rio de Janeiro is a gorgeous city. I'm here um, relaxing, chilling, and we scheduled this tour to offer this opportunity for you to get to know a little bit of this amazing place, which is a off the beaten path for people who come to Rio just to spend three, four days, even though it's in the South Zone, and I will share a little bit of where it is with you. And it's a place where people come, and I will show you a little of the life of people around the lake, uh, which many people know that for, uh, as Rodrigo de Freitas Lagoon, with the name of one of its proprietors in the past, but actually there was an original name that the uh, original people, first inhabitants around the lake, gave another name to it. And I'm going to share more about this also during the tour. We will take a walk, a 30 minutes walk around, around here until there. And I will show you some of the landscapes, the mountains around, some of the places that people like to go and visit and hike. And some of the birds, there is a, it just entered the water just because it said, but soon the mergulhão will come up. Oh, there, back up. That's the big one. So all of the swimming and uh, fisher, fisher, Fisher birds, fisherman's birds. I don't know if the you could say that fisher birds around here. They are good fisher, fisher people, fisher birds. And we will see some of their life around the lake. If we are late, uh, very uh, lucky, we could even find a family of capybaras. I don't know if you are aware of what that is, but in case we bump into a family or some of those, I'll let you know. If not, I will leave you with the surprise. I would like to know. Uh, who are they and uh, how is the sound going if the video is fine not pixelating please thumbs up let me know if something doesn't work please let me know write it down ask me to slow the voice or uh, lower or rise the volume Okay. Saúde e o vídeo tão great. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Yeah, in case you want to see something again or it's lower, just let us know and then Daniel can slow down the camera. I can repeat because, you know, Hey Go is such a great opportunity for people from all over the world to be taking virtual tours. And not everyone will follow the same pace, of uh, fast pace of like speaking in English. So if you are from a country that English is not the, the first language and I speak fast, just let me know, repeat, ask your question, I'd be happy to answer or repeat uh, and say the things I've learned about the lake or about Rio. I would be more than welcome to give you tips as well. Okay. And we are, I am a tour guide in the city running live tours and now the tours are back. People are again coming flying to Rio and that's really exciting I'm back to work I'm very excited and happy about it and I run the Rio Encantos agency so follow me on Instagram on YouTube channel Facebook page for getting more details on the things that I can offer feel free to ask and make your requests we can even find an open for virtual live stream sessions for your private groups in Zoom rooms for FaceTime. And that's another type of experience with live tours. 
uh, commissioning tours to a school or work. Anyways, there are so many things that we can create in these collaborations uh, with people from all over the world. And I will be happy to uh, know what would you be interested in. Also, if you like some of the landscapes you see, uh, know that Daniel is a great photographer and he has amazing pictures, photos of Rio de Janeiro and its landscapes in different beautiful nature uh, landscape styles you know so he sells it online and so you know uh who is there present daniel larry larry, larry. maggie maggie's present thank you Abby. 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 abby larry 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 erin as well thank you all thanks for being present who else is there Wendy. Hi, Linda and Wendy. Welcome back. Thank you so much. There are so many other tours going on. I appreciate your time. Liz and Meg and Elise for being here. And we will see some of the lifestyle around the Sacopenapan Lake. But if you arrive in Rio and you say, I actually want to go to the Sacopenapan Lake, 99% of the people won't be aware of where you want to go. So if you want to come to this place, you need to uh, know the name of one of the guys who took it over in the 17th century, uh, 1700s. And his name was Rodrigo de Freitas. He was one of the proprietors of everything that you see around here, the other things that you see on the other side and some of the neighborhoods around it. And already to share some of the landscape with you, are you aware of which mountain is here right on my side in front of us? Can you tell, despite of the distance, what is the monument which is on the top of that mountain? I will give you more tips then. This mountain, which has a, like a hump of a camel, received the name of a dromedary. And it's known as, it's the first visited attraction in Rio de Janeiro. It has 710 meters high. And I tried to give tours there twice. But because of the lack of a good transmission, I wasn't really able to transmit that for you. It is the Christ the Redeemer. Congratulations. And the Christ the Redeemer is on the top of the Corcovado Mountain. And the Sugarloaf Mountain is on the other side. We can see it. Yes, there. We can see it from here, from this part of the of the lake where we are. Yeah, as Daniel has pointed out, as if it was behind this, this rock here in front of us. And the Corcovado mountain has this name because it has like a corcova, a hump of a camel. Let's go for a walk. Let's go. Look. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> soon it's 4 30 p.m. here. Soon it's going to be the sunset. Our tour will finish before the sunset. Uh, but if you really appreciate it, remember that there are many resources on your screen. You can prompt uh, and then give tips to your guide, which really encourages us to come from our place out of the office time and come enjoy some landscape and be paid by what we do. We really love that. Also, there is a map there that you can click on it, and then you have an idea of where we are in the south zone part of the city. So this gives us an idea of the places where usually people go to when they come here to Rio. Soon the traffic around the lake will be uh, jammed. Everybody on the happy hour will be coming back home, going to their places. And then it's going to be crowded, filled with more bikers, with your families. 
walking their dogs, practicing sports. Now the people around us, some of the fortunate people who are able to come and having some free time to enjoy the sunset near the lake. It's something cool, chilly, good to do if you want to have less of a fast-paced moment, but it's low time. Now I'd like to share with you the flora around the lake. So around the lake and in the, the, the lands, the originary lands, original lands that were here in this place, they were filled with mangroves. So these were wetlands around the lake, filled with the mangroves and its vegetation around it. This is a mangy tree and some of its flowers, and inflorescencia. And a characteristic of mango, of um, uh, mangy trees, the trees of the mangroves, is the thickness of their leaves. They have thick leaves because they are on water conditions, which is a mix of the salt waters of the sea with the uh, sweet waters of the river of the monkeys, which is the, the river that is canalized and that feeds the Lake Sakopenapa. And uh, it's very beautiful, the vegetation around it. It has the, the roots, kind of aerial roots coming up. And it gives place for, uh, do, for many animals dwelling around it. Animals such as the sokos, the biguas, many birds. I can, I can listen to the, to the birds here. Uh, what, what's the sound that the birds do? They are singing or... <laughs> peeping. Pewing. <laughs> Pewing. <laughs> Hi, Norman. Thanks for joining. Hi, Carla. Thanks for joining the tour to the Sacopenapan Lake. Soon I will let you know this original name. What does that mean? But before, we are sharing a little bit of the flora around it. And also looking for, looking to see if there are any capybara coming our way, getting some of the late sunset times. Yeah. Beautiful views here to the Mangi. Now look at these beautiful aerial roots here. This is a, an example of the aerial roots of the Mangi tree. And an interesting thing is that it doesn't really grow just under the ground, but it comes uh, actually from the trunk. So the trunk of the, the, the tree, when it connects to the trunk, it launches the roots to the ground. When it hits the ground, it grows like different forks and it will be attached to the land. And you see the sand around collecting and growing and sustaining itself to be uh, uh, stable for the variations of the tides in the lake. There are a few islands also around the Sacopenapan Lake. And it's a lake with about three, uh, three meters height of depth. I don't know how much is that in feet. If some of you here are good with conversions, please let me know. And look, Daniel, around here, we can see already that from the time we arrived 20 minutes ago, that there are many people already taking a walk, practicing sports, riding their bikes. Suddenly, you know, it's like 5 p.m. It's coming and a lot of people will start to arrive. So it's a nice, safe place to come during this time of the, the day to enjoy your walk. Yes, this is an, so nice. I think we could come down and take a look at that. from a closer distance. Uh, 
around the lake there are many attractions. There is the Parque do Patins, where you can come uh, rollerblade, skateboard, rent bikes to the Itaú bike. There is the Catacumba Park, where I've ran tours and where I run tours once in a while. Here's a sab Sabiá. The Sabiá bird has a very beautiful singing. Just here I can see four birds. E um monte de lixo. Hey, Lorene and Camilo, Norman, many people joining on time. That's great as well. Thank you so much, Camilo, for joining. Uh, there are many birds around here. And the, Sam the Sabiá sinks very beautifully. So around the lake, there is the Catacumba Park, where I also run virtual tours. And it's the Sculptures Park, where you can have hikes, make picnics, and it's very popular, especially on the weekends. <laughs> it's a little bit high for me here to come up. Let me come. Oops. Yeah. Let's go. But before the arrival of the colonizers here in, around the lake, the indigenous tribes and of the Tamoyos were originally living around these wetlands and mangroves around the Sakopenapan Lake. And they, some, they had many languages variations, and they used it to call this lake the Piragua, or the Enseada do Peixe. Pira, uh, in Tupi language, is known as the Peixe fish, and qua, enseada, or um, a place surrounded like a bay of water. Also, another name was Sacopenapã, or the path, the place of the Socó birds, which is a beautiful black bird that lives, inhabits, still dwells around here. Unfortunately, the population, the indigenous population around the lake were uh, throughout time from the 1600s on, they were being uh, exterminated, killed by the colonizers, and also some of them are inhabiting ourselves, were incorporated in our society. But since they, many of them were warriors and would fight hard to have their lands, not have their lands taken, many of them were assassinated in that process. And the, the lake had many uh, proprietors. So I will show you the extension of the lake. And you could imagine like um, the, the, the king of Portugal in the 1600s, giving a portion of land to someone that sometimes haven't even arrived in Brazil, so they could come, encourage them to come, exterminate that population, took that land over in order to build uh, sugar mills, plantation farms, and mainly at that time in the 1600s and 1500s to extract wood and all the richness that still until today, these days are extracted as a colony of exploitation. So, lo, hey, Camilo, Lorene from New Zealand, TNDA, what's your name? More people coming to the lake, surrounded by beautiful castanheiras. And we see already the, the sun rays designing with their lights, the shades and shadows of the mountains and all the lush scenery that you see around now is covered with a golden color and you don't see uh, uh, the green well, seeing the green, we see it when it's closer to us.
so because of being so close to the rivers and to the sources of water, and it was in the past rich in fish, this lake, Sacopenapan Lake, uh, had a few properties and it ends up with the husband of one of the women who were proprietors of this land, who became proprietors of this land. And this guy was called Rodrigo de Freitas. Even though the lands in the 18th century was from Petronilha Fagundes, a Portuguese uh, lady who inherited the lands of the lake, it ended up with the name of her husband because <laughs> that's a fact in history that many of us, especially women, are aware of that the women in the 18th century, they have the right, they didn't have any rights. They were also seeing many of them here in the colonies as properties of their husbands. So if that happened in the 19th century, which was really rare of getting divorced, they would uh, lose the rights of raising their children. Just some of the tips, historic tips about Brazilian history, which was replied in many other countries. Uh, look at this. Slow down. Uh, wild animals can be on the road, on the bike path. So which animal is that? Hello, Dara from Italy. That animal, we are trying to find this animal. So while I'm talking to you, sharing a little bit of the Brazilian history and the landscape, I'm looking, keeping my eyes on that mangrove to see if we can find that animal, which is a capivara. Did any of you, have any of you heard about that animal? Ah, I can see a chicken, a water chicken there, down there. Look, with long legs, a red crown on the top of its head, that bird, which is really um, wise and smart while being on the water fishing, it's known as the water chicken or the chicken of the water. It's everywhere here around the lake. And it's very curious. It's really giving us some looks, trying to figure out why we are getting closer to it. And I, can you hear the sound of the other birds communicating? There are many birds around us and we can hear their different communications. So here in Rio, when you come and if you love to see birds doing bird watching tours, for example, we highly recommend you do bird watching tours. I, with uh, some of our, my colleagues, so expertise, people experts on knowing the birds, calling them, calling their attention, so you could take pictures and you could enjoy some of the um, sounds and also singing and understanding a little bit of their life. And it usually happens in the forests around 7 a.m. in the morning, and at this time of the evening, of the afternoon, because it's when they come back to, the, to their nests around the mangroves to relax and to chat. Here's Larry, largest rodent in the world. Right, Larry, the capybara. Lizette, thanks for joining, and Kathy as well. Some beautiful, handsome men walking and running around for you ladies who like that, for you people who enjoy. That's the time of the day to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there are only the ladies. Yeah, I don't know everyone who is there. But it's all for you to see the beautiful landscapes who pass by. Some animals are more frequent today than the humans. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
Beautiful garden around, and there are many equipments for fitness. With a, like, there is a baseball, a field, baseball batch, a baseball camp, baseball field around here. There is uh, there are, there are equipments for fitness. People are already sitting down to see some of the sunset, and there are restaurants around the lake which is really cool. Now we will share a little bit of the beautiful views. Thanks for joining from Canada, Mary Lou. Yay, thanks for being back. Now we would like to share some of the beautiful landscapes around the Sacopenapan Lake or the Lake of the Socos. You see, soon the sun is set down and the colors will be changing at this time of the day many people from the rowing club will be rowing in the lake which remind us that the competitions for the pan american games and the summer games of the olympics in 2016 took place in the sacopenapan lake i'm gonna use sacopenapan as its original name of the lake then the Rodrigo de Freitas, that was the name of the guy who people named after, okay? And you see beautiful mountains around here. And on the other side of the lake, just to give you an idea, is where the botanical garden is located. Due to its water sources, the king, Dom Pedro II, in the end of the 20th century, bought Many, the majority of the properties of Rodrigo de Freitas uh, basically take over again this lands to have, have all the full source, uh, how can I say, access to these huge water sources, which we can't take for granted because in the 19th century there were many droughts in Rio. Why so? climate change. Yes. Rio. Hi, Michael and Tiffany. Thanks for joining. So when you come and you see pictures of Rio today, you see everything so green in the south zone, center, different parts of town. But in the 19th century, many of this lush scenery was teared down, like many of the, the farms, the plantation farms occupied the, the hills and the mountains. Everything were trees of coffee, of fruits, and that was extinguishing the water sources and the springs in the forest. So the king, Dom Pedro II, started one of the first reforestation projects in 1861. And the objective was to reestablish uh, and rehab nature in order to recover the springs of the Tijuca National Park. Thank you, Larry, so much for leaving us a tip. Hi, Dale. So then when the king does that, buys the lake and also uh, buys many of these properties where, for example, the Corcovado Mountain has the Tijuca National Forest, has part of that, they started one of the most first successful reforestation projects in the world. Can you imagine, in 1861, with eight enslaved people, they replanted in 10 years almost 100,000 trees. And what we can have the privilege to enjoy today with this beautiful scenery of the Tijuca National Park was a project that started 150 years ago, a little bit more than 150 years ago. And it's important, you know, to know these histories because we understand how we can create damage to nature, but we can also avoid that, knowing the mistakes of the past. And now people are really relaxed at this time of the day. 
The guys already said here the pula pulas or the jump jumps, rubber rubber beds. I think I don't know how to call that for the kids to arrive from school. And suddenly we'll be here jumping around. Also, some people are renting the pedaling boats with swans and ducks. And it's something that I highly recommend. When you come here, see, come see the sunset, I would like to give you a tour in the pedaling boat. And it, maybe it can happen another time, but they increase the price of the rent. So it really depends on tipping to invest on that. But other than that, we can do it on the walk while we go now. So when the king bought the lands around the lake, he had plans, some military plans. And this is related to the persecution. We need to, to, con to contour here because the wetlands around the lake here, it's a little muddy. So we will contour here. People are playing tennis. But where I was, okay. Uh, the history of Rio de Janeiro and Brazil is the only colony of uh, Portugal where the royal family had to move all the way here in history of all the colonies, of all the the royal empires on the 19th century or in other time in history. And do you know why? Aloha. Hi, Sabina. Thanks for joining. Well, when it was the beginning, 1808, the beginning of the 20th, the 19th century, Look at why I tell a little bit of history of Brazil. Keep enjoying the changes on the landscape, the lights, the lights. And what had happened is Britain, for that we have many connections with UK in our history. Britain had close relations with the Industrial Revolution and businesses. Hey, Sabina. Hello. And economic deals with the Portuguese. All right. So with that said, the a lot of the money that Britain has, it was raised over selling the products to the colonies, either their colonies or Portuguese colonies and colonies worldwide. Well, Napoleon, looking at that, established a block, uh, a prohibition of trade and commerce between Portugal and Britain. But the British were already on those deals, doing those deals for more than a century with Portugal. So uh, Napoleon had plans of taking over the Portuguese Court, uh, court and royal family invading Portugal, what they actually did. And what they would do with the royal family, who knows? Think about Napoleon. And then uh, the British said, okay, to keep our business relations, we will escort the royal family. So put ever, all the treasures you stole from the colonies around the world, in China, Macau, India, uh, Goa, Brazil and so on, put everything in ships and we're, with our British ships, we will escort all the way to Brazil. Wow, that never had happened in time, in history. What the Portuguese did, more than 15,000 people, look, 15,000 people with different ships, put all the treasures, gold, books, rare artworks, jewelry, and they jumped into these ships and came all the way to Brazil. Wow, that's a long history. Do I have any questions so far? Sabina, hello, hello. Enjoy more of that. Soon I'll continue the story.
So how the botanical garden history of Rio de Janeiro is connected with the history of Napoleon invading Portugal in the 19th century? So these are the swam boats, the paddling boats. How do you call them? It's super fun. I love to do this. And it's, uh, take a look here, Pedalinhos Klein. The cashier, they say it's a couples for two people, half an hour, 30 reais. A capacity to adults and a child. The family, 50 reais for half an hour. Oh, let me just set it down. See? So it's very fun. I highly recommend. I would love to give a virtual tour of you to you one day on a pedaling boat. Olá, boa tarde. And this is the pier where they depart. Yeah, in case you want to know uh, how the history of the botanical garden, which is on the other side of the lake, in that direction behind the buildings, how is that connected with the depart uh, there, with the departure of the, the the royal family, the arrival of them getting settled here? In the history of the botanical garden, I can let you know on the tour of the botanical garden. Then, está terminando, né? Que já deu 33 minutos. Mas não tem problema. Tempo é esse aqui que está marcadinho. So I appreciate your time. Thanks for being present. Uh, I'd like to know if you have any questions so far, because our tour is getting to the end. And I want you to look at this beautiful big one here in front of us. It just dove. <laughs> nice. Hey, Kay, thanks for joining. We're finishing the tour now in the Sacopenapan Lake. So here's the tip I leave for you. For Daniel and I, recommend you to go beyond, go beyond the Ipanema, Copacabana, Leblon. Come also to see the north zone part of the city, the city center, the lake, Sacopanapan, and stay more than three days. Plan for Rio 10 day trip because then you can go in a slower pace and enjoy some of the good great things you see around. Take a tour with me. Get to know Daniel's, Daniel Falcon photos on the internet. And if you really like the, this landscape, he does have beautiful pictures, beautiful photos that you can buy digitally and make a print, frame it and put it in your, in your walls, at your apartment, in your house uh, to remember some of the landscapes are real. I hope you also took many postcards and if you don't have any questions, I will finish the tour here. Thanks for your collaboration. I am a professional tour guide, and this is a way that I make a living and also I promote my work. So your support is right, highly appreciated. Support the work of me and of the artist, uh, Daniel Falco, who is a photographer, videographer, and also spreading the word by leaving good reviews or sharing your postcards on Facebook groups either in your Hey Go Voyages or other pages on social media. Also follow me at Rio Encantos, R-I-O-E-N-C-A-N-T-O-S on YouTube, Rio Encantos on Instagram and Facebook. I hope you had a good time. I'm also having a good time. See you on the next tour that's gonna happen in the Sugarloaf Mountain this week. Please go there and make your reservation. Bye-bye.
Thank you, IB. Isso. 